Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for his strength. And my story isn't over, my story's just begun. Well, you won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Well, you won't define me, that's what my father does. Help me out. Ooh, lay your burdens down. Ooh, here in the Father's house. Check your shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore. Bible's not the end game, the journey's where you are. You never wanted perfect, you just wanted my heart. And the story isn't over, if the story isn't good. Failure's never final when the Father's in the room. Come on. Failure's never final when the Father's in the room. Lay your burdens down Ooh, Here in the Father's house Check your shame at the door Cause it ain't welcome anymore Prodigals come home, the helpless find hope. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. Yeah. Prison doors swing wide, the dead come to life. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. Hey, miracles take place, the cynical find pain. Love is breaking through. When the father's in the room, hey! Jericho walls are quaking, strongholds now are shaking. Love is breaking through when the father's in the room. Love is breaking through when the father's in the room, hey! Ooh, lay your burdens down. Check your shame at the door, it ain't welcome anymore. Ooh, you're in the Father's house. Have a sound. Ooh, lay your burdens down. Ooh, you're in the Father's house. Come on, check your shame at the door, it ain't welcome anymore. You're in the Father's house. Good morning. All right. Creation. That's what they're teaching on. The realities of new creation. The men, we have a discussion group where I believe we were talking about love, about the love of God, that God loves us, and that's important. And it will strengthen your faith. Wednesday at 7 o'clock, we have a midweek service. We have Ash Wednesday's beginning there also, and it runs from... Uh, Wednesday until the 31st of March, and it's the time of Lent. Friday at 10 a.m., we have a Word Bible, and we're doing a teaching. Jesse's going to be doing a teaching. I think it'll be fascinating. It's called Encounters with Jesus, and it's going to be that time of period where we're able to talk about the, the encounters with Jesus. So that's, that's at 10 a.m. and 11 a.m., we have a revival praying. We're praying for our nation. We need to pray for our nation and our government. And we need to be praying for our own local church, the area churches, the prosperity of community of, of Elwood City, that they would prosper. Can I have an amen on that? Elwood needs to prosper. Our economy needs to prosper. The church needs to prosper. Saturday is the 20th and the youth snow tubing. You got to sign up for that, guys. You're going to do that. It's a good place to go. And I'm telling you, I said it before, but Boyce Park is where they're going. It's an excellent place to go snow tubing. Very few trees out there. So that's... <laughs> That is important if you've done that. 
March 7th, don't forget, Woody Woodson is coming. That's a powerful service. I'm telling you, it's something that you'll be blessed. You come out, there's healing. It's just revelation comes through him. So that's Woody Woodson. He's coming on the 7th. And also on the 7th, we have a new class forming. It's called Forever Ruined for the Ordinary. Forever Ruined for the Ordinary. We don't want to be ordinary. We want to be super ordinary, which we are with Christ inside of us. Fred Hamilton will be teaching that. It'll be right after. It'll be 1130 right out in the cafe. So if you come out and join it, it's for four weeks. Fred, we do are doing that. Also on the the this coming next the 21st would be there's an ushers meeting. We want to mention that. And if you'd be interested in being a greeter, you're welcome. To, you're invited to come out to that also. So we're having an ushers meeting on the 21st. And then we're having also if you're interested in as a greeter, you know, come out for that also. Don't forget, kids, kids, don't forget we have a puppet ministry. Those kids are going over. There's an opportunity over there. And at ages four to six, grades one to five, we're in Explorers. And I believe the youth is in sixth grade, six to 12, where we're having Joseph and Dawn. If you see Dawn, then say, say hello to her. Everybody knows Joseph. They've got to say hello to Dawn, too. And then we have birthdays. And this is really great. We have Wayne Sakelli is coming on the 15th. So if you see Wayne... Uh, and then also Pam Fisher is the 17th, and Lynn Laco is the 20th. So if you see those people, you want to wish them a happy birthday, and it's just an opportunity. So let's all stand up and praise God. Let's welcome God. You know, we want to mention also how much we thank you for the social distancing and wearing the mask and anything like that. We really appreciate that very much, and we know God's protecting us. But let's use some wisdom in that too. Amen. Father, we just thank you. We welcome you, Spirit of God. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, to cause us to come to, into your presence and bless you, give you praise, and let you know we love you this Valentine's Day. You're our Valentine, God. You are our heart's desire. We bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. We just invite you, Father God, into this house this morning. We say yes to you, Lord. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God that's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will. to you, Lord. I count on one thing. The same God who never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will seek for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will for choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names, and nothing can stand against, and I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names, and nothing can stand against, and I choose to praise. Nothing 
can't stand against And I choose to praise To glorify, glorify The name of the Lord And nothing can stand against Yes, I will In the lowest valley Yes, I will Bless your name For joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will for all my days. And yes, I will for all my days. And yes, I will. Amen. Give the Lord some praise this morning. We say yes to you, Lord. throughout my history your faithful your faithfulness has walked beside me we sing this to you Lord this morning the winter storms made way for spring mm. every season from where I'm standing I see evidence of your goodness all over my life we give you praise all over my life I see your promises and fulfillment all over my life all over my life help me remember when I'm Across the empty grave, the evidence is endless. All my sin rolled away because of you, oh Jesus. Yeah, see the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless. All my sin rolled away because of you, oh Jesus. of your goodness all over my life sing it with me church all over my life I see I see your promises and fulfillment all over my life all over my life yeah. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises and fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. And why should I fear? Oh, the We trust you today, Lord. We trust you, Lord. The goodness of God, Lord. We receive it this morning. And I 
sing praises to your name. Praises to your name. A name that's so much greater than all names. All honor to worship you today. We lift you up. Be lifted up. Be lifted higher. Be lifted up. Be lifted higher. I sing Sing praises to your name. Praises to your name. The name that's so much higher than all names. All Is life, God. Your name is life. Your name is hope inside me. Hope inside me. Your name is love. A love that always finds me. Always finds me. Your name is life, your name is hope inside me, hope inside me, your name is love, a love that always finds me, always finds me. We worship you, we worship you. 
If you would just join with me this morning, let's raise our hands towards heaven. Lord, we love you. On this Valentine's Day, Lord, we receive your love. You complete us, Lord. You, we are complete in you. You're all we need, Father. Hebrews 9, 12 says that Jesus entered in by his own blood once to obtain eternal redemption for us. His very own blood obtained eternal redemption for us. I like what Smith Wigglesworth said, that the Holy Spirit doesn't bring condemnation, but rather he reveals the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad? The Holy Spirit reveals the blood of Jesus and what it's done. And now we just have to have faith in the blood of Jesus. Andrew Murray said that only one thing is needed to enjoy this blessing. And that is faith in the blood of Jesus. The blood has done everything for us. Come on, let's lift our hands and thank Him for that blood today. Glory to God. Thank you that you shed your blood for us, Father, to obtain eternal redemption for us. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Let's sing about it this morning some more. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father, and I've known you as a friend. Oh, I have lived in the goodness of God. Yes. All oh, my life, you have been faithful. You have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Your goodness, God, your goodness Your goodness is running after Is running after me your goodness is running after, is running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, is running after your goodness, God. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. Yeah. Your goodness is running after, is running after. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. All my life you have been 
faith. Let's sing it this morning. All my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Let's sing this. God is so good. If you need a miracle in your life right now, just come to this altar. Just come right now. Just kneel at this at the altar and just say, God, I've come to receive my miracle today. I come, come not in uncertainty, but in assurance of the blood of Jesus. Not in fear, but in faith. I come right now to receive my miracle, Lord. I come to express my humility and my faith, my confidence in you, O oh God. The devil wants to undermine our confidence in God. Don't let him do it. The Bible says, for the Lord shall be thy confidence. It also says, this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, and he hears us. And we know that he hears us. We know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Let's have confidence toward God today. It also says in Hebrews, don't cast away therefore your fearless confidence which has a great recompense of reward. So discard that lack of confidence and unbelief and doubt and say I'm going to have confidence in His Word. Abraham was fully persuaded though it God promised he was also able to perform. That's confidence in what God spoke. In confidence in His Word. That's what faith is. A firm persuasion. Let's just have confidence toward God today. And I pray right now, Father, thank you that each person that's acted in faith, they've done so to see you respond. You know, by the way, when you act in faith, the responsibility now is upon God. That's right. You've done your part. You act in faith, and God will reciprocate. God will respond with that miracle, with that healing, whatever it is. So these people, are they just acted in faith, and God is going to respond to each and every need that's up here today. And if you have this, uh, that need, you just raise your hand and say, God, I'm responding. I'm acting in faith right now. I acknowledge the blood of Jesus over my life. Hallelujah. Oh, let's sing that chorus again. person. Realize that you have a covenant with God. Unbreakable covenant. God said in His Word that He will not alter it. And that's why it says, Blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of Thy countenance. In Thy name shall they rejoice all the day. And in Thy righteousness shall they be exalted. For thou art the glory of their strength, and in thy favor our horns shall be exalted. For the Lord is our defense, and the Holy One of Israel is our King. An unbreakable covenant with Him. Lift your hands and thank Him for it today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
ratified in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Woo! My, 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 my. Don't want to stand still. <laughs> Feel like running. <laughs> Jesus for the blood. Thank you for the blood. God's bringing peace to you once again in your heart. Been boggled down by turmoil and frustration and chaos, but God is bringing peace to your heart right now. Just receive it. He wants you to walk in peace. Peace that passes all understanding from the Prince of Peace, from the God of Peace. We don't have to be frustrated or anxiety-ridden about life. No. We can trust in Him and have walk in peace. It says when your mind is stayed on Him, you'll have that peace. You'll keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed or fixed on Him. Lord, we fix our mind on you today. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Oh, yes. Everybody say, that miracle is mine. I receive it today in Jesus' name. So just believe that you receive it, according to Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Believe that it's yours. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Give Jesus a hand today. He's awesome, isn't he? Thank you, Lord. Well, I sense his glory in this place. You can sit down. You know, the Bible does say that the saints will be joyful in glory. Psalm 145, verse 9. Praise God. I just remember that scripture too. I will rejoice in you and be glad. I will extol your love more than wine. Draw me after you and let us run together. I will rejoice in you and be glad. That's reason for rejoicing, isn't it? Hallelujah. We got a Savior. We have a way out. We have something that the world doesn't have. Amen. Glory to God. Well, Lord, glad you're here today, and I think we're about the 38th week now inside, and we thank you that no one has gotten ill in this place, and that's the Lord. Come on, let's praise him for it. Let's thank God for that. <laughs> well, we want to uh, start our uh, construction on our restrooms out the pavilion uh, in just two or three weeks from now, so I uh, want to keep in mind, one of the goals that we have here is to see People utilize the small groups that we have. We have a lot of, well, not a lot, but we have some small groups that meet, and it's great for discipleship, fellowship, evangelism. So be sure to avail yourselves of those if you like. And we're believing God for a spring harvest. Everybody say spring harvest. <laughs> that's our goal, have a spring harvest. Amen? We're seeing new people come in all the time, so that's great. And uh, so we've got various spring outreaches and so forth, and so we encourage you to uh, get involved in some of those things. Um, as we think about our offering today, the uh, roof fund. We told you before we were going to put a new roof on. We don't know whether we're going to tear the old one off and put a new one on or whether we're just going to cover it with something. And uh, so we're still debating on that. But nevertheless, we've got a roof fund, and we encourage you to give in to that. And those of you who are uh, at home, we thank you for your Tithes and offerings. Yep, people are sending those in, and we appreciate that. That's, that's helpful. Amen. I'm just going to read something to you from Genesis about Melchizedek. Genesis chapter 14. No, let's see. Is it 18 or 14? One or the other here. One second. <laughs> it is 14. Yeah. Genesis 14. And beginning with verse 19, now this is talking about Melchizedek. Melchizedek was a king priest, king of Salem, king priest. He was a type of Jesus. He had no beginning, no ending, uh, but it, he was a king priest. So that's the way with Jesus, no beginning, no ending, right? He's evermore shall be. And it says in verse 19, and he blessed him, meaning Abraham, and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. 
So Abraham tithed to Melchizedek, king of Salem, this king priest, the type of God himself, type of Jesus, and uh, it's representative of God's kingdom on the earth. And so that was one of the first indications, first examples of people tithing. So we encourage you to do so. It's uh, part of the Bible. It's part of the, it's part, yeah, you say, well, it was under the law. Yeah, but it was under, it was before the law. It was under the law, and it was after the law, too. So we'll go ahead and give this morning. Ushers, if you would, go ahead and pass out the envelopes on this Valentine's Day. All right. So keep in mind, Operation Saturation. We want to saturate this area with the Word of God. My wife and I <coughs> were at the YMCA, and we talked to a young girl who was a lifeguard. And she was, I mean, we gave her a track and told her, you know, well, this is, check this out. This will tell you some good news. And if you pray this prayer in the back, it'll be your best year ever. She says, I can't believe this. She says, I was just thinking about this and debating over this whole issue of how do you connect with God? And she says, and then you give this to me. I said, that's the providence of God. That's how much God loves you. I'm telling you, the people out there are hungry. Do you realize that? This, it, with all that's been going on, people have been distraught and isolated, etc. But people are hungry for God now. Everywhere you go, they're like that. So carry some tracks with you. And be sure to involve yourself with Operation Saturation. Okay. We have the envelopes. Everybody's got their envelopes. And we got the buckets here. All right. Thank you, ushers. We Come on, let's give a big hand for our ushers. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Dear Lord, we just thank you for these time and offerings. We ask them to use them for your glory and to spread the good news of the gospel. Bless the gift to give her like. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glory. Well, if you can, stand with us one more time. your hands to him and thank him for all his goodness. Amen. We praise you, God. You're so good. Lord, we thank you for this word today. We ask you to feed your people, Father. Feed the flock of God with your word today, we pray. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Father, thank you. Oh, God, thank you for doing miracles, Father. Mm. Yes, Father. Thank you for your we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. He that dwelleth in love dwells in God and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect that we might have boldness in the day of judgment. Thank you. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. 
Notice it doesn't say God has love. It says God is love. Mm -hmm. Everybody say God is love. Thank you for your love. Transforming power to restore us, make us whole again. Father, we sense your presence right now. This oasis of restoration. This place of your presence, oh God. An oasis of refreshing where we can be refreshed. Thank you, Father. Good to have our brother Paul back here again. Awesome. Good to see you, bro. Awesome. Oh, yes. Thank you for the presence mm. where you restore our souls. Thank you, God. Where we release the cares of life. Where we release the fears. Where we release the anxiety. And where we learn to walk after the Spirit. Because we know that Walking in the flesh, in selfishness and flesh, you know, that's that's just going to lead to a separation from God and, and our demise. But when we walk after the Spirit, therein is the fulfillment that we want. We can all learn to walk after the Spirit, can't we? And not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name. Give Jesus a hand this morning. Well, you can be seated. And, you know, uh, I think we have a little clip back here that they showed on Friday night at the uh, couples outing. They have a very successful couples outing here. And let's take a look at this. Oh, this couple here. Maybe from a one to a ten. Now, I've made a lot of mistakes, but in 56 years of marriage, we have a good thing going. I guess it's uh, by the scripture that says louder. 1 Peter 3, 7, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. At first, I was dwelling with her according to ignorance and stupidity. A little no, louder. But I did learn some things. And one of the key things is this. Show affection to one another. Be sure to show affection. Like I'm showing affection right now with my arm around her. Okay? That's very important. Is that right, honey? Right. <laughs> right. Okay. So be sure to, in fact, do it in front of your kids. I didn't do n enough of that in front of my kids. So anyhow, give them an example because affection is very important, isn't it? Uh, affection is uh, touch, talking, listening. It's an intimacy. It's a closeness. That's what, that's what affection is. In fact, that's the woman's number one need, affection. Intimacy, closeness, touch, listening, communicating. Those are all very important, right, huh? Amen. And, uh, and it wasn't natural for you at first. That's right. So if it's not act natural for you guys then tonight, start somewhere where you feel comfortable. Yeah, very good. And mutual respect is a very important one, too. Mutual respect. We don't cut up on each other. We don't put each other down. Uh, we laugh a lot. <laughs> I laugh at my own stupidity. But it's good to have mutual respect because if there's disrespect, it gives the devil a wedge to come right between you. So make sure you have this mutual respect for each other. Right? Right. Good right. thing. You respect me and I respect you. Especially when you're out with other people, you feel a little bit more looser and you know you want to make them laugh. So you might say something to embarrass your husband or to disrespect him. We need to be aware of that, not to do that. That's good because that's one of the number one needs of a man. To be honest. Is to have respect. Mm -hmm. The number one need for a woman is affection. The number one need for a man is to be respected. All right, praise the Lord. Anyhow, we're, that's, we're not going to preach on that today. We just want to give you a couple of little nuggets before I get into my message, though, if that's all right with you. Uh, you heard about the guy who said, my wife complained that my life revolves around Facebook, and it has destroyed the way we communicate. So I blocked her. <laughs> Don't do that. That's not wisdom, right? No. <laughs> um, there's a, is, do I have a picture up there? 
I think there's a picture of the grass greener on the other side of the hill or something like that. Let's see what it says. Jesus no, that's not it. No, is there a picture? Maybe not. Anyhow, it says basically that the grass is not greener than the other side of the hill. It just means that that grass was watered, okay? So in your relationship, you got to water that relationship, don't you? It's uh, and Or it will just kind of turn barren. So, but that's where the grass is really going to be greener, where you put some time into it and you uh, make sure that you speak words of edification. I, I encourage couples to do this, speak edification, words of commendation, words of appreciation, and words of adoration. You need to write those down <laughs> because, listen, when you speak words of adoration, appreciation, commendation, and edification, not condemnation now, but commendation, when you speak these kinds of words, you're building something into your relationship that's going to be lasting. It's going to create a bond between the two of you. And so if 85% of the time you speak those kinds of words, you're going to lay a foundation for a great, great bond and take your marriage to the next level. Like I said here a minute ago on that clip, you can take your marriage for a one, from a 1 or a 3 to a 10. If we'll do these things. So remember those edification, commendation, appreciation, adoration, and you'll have a new relationship within 30 days. How many believe that? I'm glad you're excited about that. Say amen. <laughs> amen. But it'll bring a loving bond. Commu by, by the way, communication is very important because it resolves barriers between the two of you when you communicate, and it builds a closer bond. When you communicate. So get you a, hot hot, a cup of hot chocolate or coffee. I guess they call that Jehovah Java, whatever. You get it and <laughs> sit down and begin to ask one another some questions. Not closed-end questions, but open-ended questions. Not short-answer questions, but you know what I mean. Open-ended questions. And, and it'll help build that relationship between the two of you. And, by the way, when you do communicate, be sure to do this. I tell people there are different levels of communication, and you got to get past the superficial or the factual, and you got to get down to the gut level aspects of communication. Are you listening to me? In other words, you can talk superficially, hi, how you doing, and keep on going, or uh, see you tomorrow, or something like that. But, or then you can go to the factual which is how much did you spend on those tires, new tires on the car, or how much did you spend at the grocery store, or what time do we pick the kids up? That's a factual. <laughs> then we get to the opinion, and the opinion has to do with what you believe in and uh, talking about your, your heart's desires and your beliefs and so forth. And then you go on down to the, um, yes, we go down to the, Feeling area, all right? Feelings. What are you really feeling in your gut, you know? What, what are you going through? Well, I'm feeling abandoned, or I'm feeling lonely, or I'm feeling isolated, or I'm feeling inadequate, or, you know, what are you feeling? And then, fifthly, you, you go into the transparency. Transparency has to do with saying, well, honey, this is one of my faults right here, and I'll, I'm, you know, laying it open before you, and I want you to help me with it, and blah, 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 okay? Where you're being transparent. So did you get those levels of communication? You got to get down into the opinion, the feeling, and the transparency aspect of communication if you're really going to build a relationship. I've had couples in, we've talked to them and tried to counsel them, uh, having rough spots in their marriage, and we looked at these, the, the superficial, the factual, the opinion, the uh, feeling, and the transparency, and they said, oh, we see what's wrong with our marriage. We, we don't go past the, the uh, superficial and the factual. Well, you got to get down into the deeper gut level things. You know, what are you feeling? What you know, trans being transparent if you're going to have a meaningful relationship. Okay. Now, I'm, I know I'm meddling a little bit, but uh, it'll help you, right? It'll help you build a closer bond. Once again, I'll give you those again: superficial, factual, opinion, feelings, and transparency. So get down into the more gut level communication in your marriage relationship. And you'll find a greater bond that will be produced. All right. Do you believe that today? Amen. Amen. Well, you know, by the way, I didn't pass these out yet. This is just a little something that you can do. Uh, ushers, if you'd help me pass these out, please. 
we hinted to this here in another service, but now we want to pass these out. There's a new revelation. I think it came from James Dobson here. Uh, and uh, so I think that's the first part of that. Don't read it now. Listen to the message now. You can read it later. All right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, God is good. Edification, commendation, appreciation, and adoration. In 30 days, you'll have a new loving bond, a marvelous new relationship. And, and be sensitive to one another, right? Okay. I told you I was just going to give you a little nugget of that, and then we're going to move on. Today, you know, we've been uh, thinking about, oh, I mentioned earlier, about having confidence toward God. And you see, this is something that the, the devil's always trying to undermine is our confidence toward God. But God does everything based on our belief and our expectation. I wrote this down the other day. When you are believing and expecting for a good outcome, that is what brings that good outcome. That's what brings the miracle. Whenever you are expecting and believing, I wrote it down here. Let me see if I get it right here. Believing and expecting for a good outcome is really what brings it to pass. Believing and expecting a miracle is really what's going to bring it to pass. You say, give me a scripture for that. As thou hast believed, so be it done unto you. So expecting and believing for a healing that expecting and believing is actually what brings it to pass. So, believe for a good outcome. Don't think in your mind, oh, what if this, what if that, what if... No, no, don't even con consider that because expecting and believing is what will... For your miracle is what will bring it to pass. Glory to God. Amen. So, anyhow... Confidence toward God. How does a believer maintain confidence toward God? Well, we gave you a couple of scriptures earlier. And let me give you this one here in Psalm 27.1. Go there with me. Psalm 27.1. Psalm 27.1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Sound like that guy's got confidence toward God? <laughs> yeah. That was a Psalm of David. And he had confidence toward God. And he says, of, of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord gave me a song one time based on that scripture. You want to hear it? I'll try it. The, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid when the wicked, even mine enemies, should come against me? The Lord is the light of my salvation. Who, whom shall I fear? Amen. Kind of a Jewish minor chord. Well, thank you. But the Lord gave me that song based on that scripture. And it really exudes confidence toward God, doesn't it? And we in the body of Christ today need confidence toward God. Confidence in all that we do because the enemy, as I said, wants to undermine it. Believers are constantly challenged to, con to conform to a secular worldview. But we must resist that Amen. and maintain a biblical worldview. When something comes up, Ask yourself, what does the Bible say about it, you see? And the way to do that is let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly. Colossians 3.16. Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly. And one translation says extravagantly. Wow, I've just been looking at the promise box every day. No, that's not extravagantly. We've got to let the Word of Christ dwell in us richly extravagantly, so that when something comes up, we will know exactly what the Word says about it, because that's the foundation for all that we do, say, think, and the way we behave. Do you believe it today? Amen. And so we can comply then in advance when perilous times come. Listen, you don't want to have a storm come, and then you have to go find your boots. 
<laughs> or your storm windows, right? Yeah. Well in advance of that storm, you want to be prepared. Yeah. I mean, when your house is caught on fire and it's, it's blazing, it's not the time to decide to call the fire department. Well, you better call the fire department. But I mean, <laughs> in other words, what I'm trying to say is you've got to build a foundation so that when the storm of life hits, you're ready for it. You know, you're not going to, right now is not a good time to winterize your home, is it? I mean, better late than never, but, you know, to put plastic on your windows and storm windows on and that sort of thing. No, you should have done that a while back, right? And so we're saying the same thing here. Build yourself up in the Word of God so that when the storms of life hit, you'll be ready to thwart them, to challenge them, to overcome them, and to win by faith in Jesus. Amen? With confidence. So build confidence ahead of the storm. Amen? And get so full of the Word of God and your, through your daily devotions and so forth and so on that you're fortified for the challenges of life. Acts, uh, look, a good scripture. You can check it out later. Acts 20, 32. It talks about the scriptures being able to build you up and give you an inheritance with the saints in life. And you can maintain a confidence in the promises of God that it will see you through that challenge that you're facing. You're, why? When you're meditating the Word of God, you're daily reminding yourself of what your covenant says. We need, to remind, we need reminded of what's in our covenant, what's in our inheritance. Amen. Glory to God. An attorney friend of mine does and, and, and wills and, and estates and trusts and, you know, he does all that sort of thing. And he, he says so, something that people overlook. Because when it comes time that person passes away, then the, the, they have to have something to look at to know what's in their inheritance, right? Amen. So you can operate in confidence when you know what's in your covenant, and you can count it all joy when you fall into different testings, James 1, 7, because the Word will give you an unshakable trust. Do you believe it today? Psalm 125, look at this one. This is a good scripture. It talks about what happens when you trust. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. Trusting in what? Trusting in the Word. Trusting in this covenant. Listen, let me share something with you. Do you realize that as a child of God, you have an advantage over the unsaved person? You have an advantage over a person that doesn't know their covenant. It's absolutely true. Think about David. And when he went up against Goliath, you remember the words that he spoke? He says, you uncircumcised Philistine, I'm going to take your head off and I'm going to feed your carcass to the fowls of the air. Yeah. Do you remember that? He says, you uncircumcised Philistine is what he said to Goliath, uncircumcised, indicating he had no covenant. David had a covenant. And so he dropped that 13-foot giant with one rock. Amen? Then cut his head off. Somebody said one time David was trying to get ahead. Well, anyhow, bing, right in the forehead. He got him. Why? Because he had a covenant. Goliath had no covenant. People in the world have no covenant. Or some don't even know their covenant. And this is why it's important to know. Because listen, when you understand that you have an advantage, you have a covenant advantage over the unsaved person. You have an atonement advantage over the world. A supernatural advantage. So when the doctor gives you a bad diagnosis, you can say, thank you, sir, walk away and say, I do not receive that. What, I have an advantage over that diagnosis because I have a God that's mighty, is supernatural, and I have an atonement advantage, glory to God. Amen. Or somebody says, well, so-and-so died with that. And uh, you, you can show grace to them and walk away and say, thank God one will fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, but it shall not come nigh me. Thank you, Lord. I, I have a covenant advantage. Yeah. Glory to God. Marilyn Hickey 
had a, a, like a lump or something on her finger. And she was at church one night, and one of the other gals, and uh, the parishioners there said to her, he, she showed it to her, and she says, oh, my goodness. I knew a lady that had that same thing on her finger, and she died. <laughs> Marilyn says, thanks. You really helped my faith a lot, you know. <laughs> well, lo and behold, Marilyn continued to believe that she had an advantage, an atonement advantage. And so a couple services later, by the way, that, that lump or whatever it was turned black. Looked worse. But she went to church sometime later, two, three weeks later, and in that service, that lump dropped off of her, and she was totally healed. Why? She has a covenant advantage, glory to God. And then she tells a story about she wanted to have a baby way back when. And she, here she is, 36 years old, and she had no child. But she and her husband, Wally, were believing God. And she began to feel some differences in her body, so she went to a doctor, and the doctor examined her and says, well, ma'am, he says, uh, those differences that you're feeling, that's just change of life. You're just going through change of life. She walked away and says, Father, I thank you that I have a covenant advantage through you, oh God. Thank you, Lord. I don't have to accept that in Jesus' name. She kept believing God. And then she went to another doctor. Oh, she waited 10 years. Well, she was 36. But when, when she got the report. When she got the report. Whatever. Anyhow, 36 years. You know, she stood for 10 years for this child. So anyhow, she went to another doctor. She said, I'm feeling all these things. And she, he examined her and says, ma'am, the reason you're feeling those things is you've got life in there. You are pregnant. Hallelujah. And she wound up having Sarah, her daughter. And Sarah helps her in the ministry. And you go to her website or whatever, and it's Marilyn and Sarah. Glory to God. Listen. You have a covenant advantage, but you got to know what's in your covenant. You got to know that he said, I, in Jeremiah 30, verse 17, I will heal you of your wounds. I will restore your health. I will heal you of your wounds. You got to know in Isaiah 53, 5, that it says, He hath borne our sicknesses. The word there in the Hebrew He's borne our sorrows, which means sicknesses. He bore our sickness, in the Hebrew, means sicknesses, and carried our pains. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. I'm telling you, there's your covenant promise right there, church. He says, I will satisfy you. With long life, I will satisfy you, and the length of your days I will fulfill. Glory to God. Everybody say, I have a covenant promise. Now you say, yeah, but the rain falls on the just and the unjust. That's true. It does. It falls on the just and the unjust. But the difference between you and the unjust is you have a covenant advantage. Are you listening to me? You have a way out of those test trials, challenges, and things that would come upon you. Glory to God. Everybody say, atonement advantage. Hallelujah. And it supersedes the medical report. It's a notch above. You have an atonement advantage. Once again, because of the scripture, as thou hast believed, so be it done unto you. So expecting and believing is for a good report, a good outcome is the very thing that brings it to pass. Glory to God. So, hallelujah. Everybody say, I have an advantage. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. God has not withdrawn his hand from your life. He has not abandoned you. In spite of what you might think the, the enemy is telling you to do, or the, telling you what was happening. We had a gal uh, that I just got a report the other day. She had been to the service where Justin Buckles was here. And uh, she was prayed for. She had, I believe she was in a wheelchair. She had her foot all bandaged up and everything. She sent a text the other day and said, the doctors are amazed 
at the progress, and she was going to have a procedure to have all these contraptions removed or something from her, her, her leg, her, her foot. And he was amazed at the progress, tremendous progress. Amy, Amy Sisko is who it was. Amen? So, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. He sits exalted, and you're there with him, and the devil's under your feet. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory to God. Well, how many want some more confidence toward God? Amen. Amen. He's a loving, heavenly Father, and He desires that you have confidence toward Him. When you delight yourself in Him, He says He's going to give you what? The desires of your heart. Thank you, Lord. The desires of your heart. So, Matthew chapter 14. Go there with me. Matthew 14. Everybody say confidence toward God. Now, you can't be living in a, in, a, in a bunch of sin and expect God to, to honor His covenant. You've got to come to Him. You've got to repent. That's not a bad word. See, and you know, repenting, I hear people say repent means to just turn and go the opposite way. It's more than that. You have to change your thinking, your heart, and say, no more going that way. I'm going this way from now on. Are you listening to me? So repentance is not just changing your thinking. I hear different theologians say that. No, it's more than that. There has to be a heart connection to that and, and a determination, a commitment. I'm going to go walk with God. And I'm going to enjoy the blessings that are part of this covenant relationship that I have with Him. I wonder if we could bring the, the uh, music team back up for a little bit today. And the way to do that, you see, the way we walk after the Spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh is 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27 tells us, I keep under my body, and I bring it into subjection. I, who's the I? I is your spirit. I, my spirit, keep my body under subjection. I, my spirit, is in control. My spirit rises to the ascendancy. And dominates the flesh. My spirit rises to the ascendancy. No, I'm not going to get angry. I'm not going to lose my temper. No, that's just my flesh. Do you know that anger is a work of the flesh? Amen. 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 An emotional outburst. I think I'll punch that drywall. Well, that's, that's your flesh. <laughs> but you have to say in your spirit, I, my spirit, rise to the ascendancy and dominate. And I do not allow that. No. I'm going to walk in the love walk. Every step of the way, I'm going to forgive. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't care who's the president is. All right? You got to forgive. Amen. Hallelujah. So anyhow, we just can't live on any old way we want to. God expects us to walk in that covenant. He expects us to be mindful of that covenant. He's mindful of it, and he wants you to be mindful of it too. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now is the time for us to just connect with God. And let's receive what's in your covenant today. Is that, is that all right? Let's get into some worship here this morning as we leave. Come on, let's stand. Let's connect with Him. come to the altar if you need to, if you desire to. Come and just have a time with Jesus. Reconnect with Him. Realign with Him. It's a time to get realigned if you're out of line. Amen. If you run over some railroad tracks in your car and you've knocked your front wheels out of line, you got to take it and get them lined up, right? Oh, yeah. This morning I had to reboot my phone. It wouldn't work right. I had to realign it, right? Sometimes we get out of line. We get out of alignment. And we need to get back into alignment with Jesus. When you do that, everything else works out. Amen. He gives you the power to live this life. He empowers you on the inside with the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead so that you can let your spirit, man, rise to the ascendancy and dominate and walk in love and walk after the Spirit. 
Cash in on that inheritance that's yours. Amen. Everybody say, I have a covenant advantage. I have an atonement advantage. I don't live like the world. I don't think like the world. I don't act like the world. I'm a notch above the world because of my covenant advantage. In Jesus' name. Come on, praise Him for it. Let's worship Him today. Hallelujah. Let's just turn our heart to the Lord this morning. Let's sing this together. The atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around that the Spirit of the Lord is here. The atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around that the Spirit of the Lord flow in this place fill our hearts with your love your love surrounds us that's all we need Lord you're the reason we came to encounter your love your love surrounds Atmosphere is changing now. For oh, the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is. Oh, show yourself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are turned to you, Lord. Lord, let's sing this one more time. The atmosphere. The atmosphere. Changing now for the spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. The spirit of the Lord is here. Overflow in this place. Fill our hearts with your love, your love surrounds us. You're the reason we came to encounter your love, your love surrounds us. You're the reason overflow in this place. Fill our hearts with your love. Your love surrounds us. You're the reason we came to encounter your love. Your love surrounds us. Yeah, yeah. You can encounter his love right now. Those of you watching, everybody here today, you can encounter, you can have an encounter with Jesus and receive his love today. Let's all just pray this prayer together. Mean it from your heart. Say, Heavenly Father, Jesus is real. He died on the cross for my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. I believe you were raised from the dead. Be Lord of my life. Thank you for forgiving me. I repent of my past life. I go another direction. I think differently. I want to act differently. I want my heart to be in it. Thank you for that connection with you, Lord. Conversational relationship 
that intimacy with you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, if you prayed that prayer, you met it from your heart, you're a child of God. You don't have to earn it. You can't earn it. It's a free gift. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You just received the gift of salvation. Now, read your Bible every day. Pray. Talk to God every day. Get into a good local church. And, you know, that's what's going to be needed in this last day is to stay in a good local church in order to survive and to make it in this last day. Teach your children that, too. Amen. Let's love on him. Let's worship him as we go. Sing that again. Spirit of God, fall fresh on us this morning. Spirit of God, fall fresh on us. We need your presence. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Here is in heaven, Spirit of God, fall fresh on us. We need your presence. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Here is. fresh on us we need your presence your kingdom come your will be done here is one more time spirit spirit of God fall fresh on us we need your Your kingdom come, your will be done. Here is heaven. Spirit of God, fall fresh on us today. Fall fresh on us, fall fresh on us, fall fresh on us. We yell to you, we surrender to you, Lord. We yield to you today, Lord. Fall fresh on us. Just gonna close with this bridge this morning. We long to look on your face, the one that we love. And I long to look on the face of the one that I love long. Your presence is where I belong All to love on the face of the one that I love alone to stay in your presence is where
I belong with you on this Valentine's Day, Lord. You are the lover of our soul, Lord. You captivate us, Lord. You captivate our heart. Overwhelm us with your peace, with your love, Lord. Just extend your love to him. We long to look on your face, the one that we love. Try a verse here. I'm in awe of your beauty. Lost in your eyes.
We belong with you, Lord. You are Lord. You are friend. You promise to never leave us nor forsake us. We're sticking with you, Lord. We're sticking with you. <laughs> In the last days, many will depart from the faith, Lord, but we're sticking with you. We're sticking with you, our friend, our Savior, our Lord. Oh, we're sticking with you, Lord. We're staying with you, Lord. We're staying with you, Lord. We're staying right beside you. We're staying right beside you, Lord. Lord, you have our hearts. And we're going to continue to search for yours, Lord. We want your heart. But I'm not afraid. And I'm not afraid. One more time, go. I'm not afraid. And I'm not afraid. Oh, oh, show me your glory. Yeah. Show me your glory. Oh, show me your glory. Show us your glory, Lord. Show me. You're dismissed, everybody. Thanks for sticking around. Have a great day. Glad you, you joined us. And we want you to know we're a church that believes in rescuing the lost and transforming lives by the love of Jesus. That's right. We're, that's what we're all about. That's why we call our vision Operation Saturation. We want to saturate this area with the Word of God so that people will come to know Jesus. But anyhow, we want you to know that uh, this is a good time to make Jesus the Lord of your life. And just pray this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe with all my heart that Jesus is the Son of God. I know He died for my sins. He was raised from the dead to justify me. Jesus, come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. And I'll serve you forever. Thank you, Jesus, that I'm saved. You've made me righteous by your precious blood. So, Get plugged into a local church and a good church, one that preaches the Word of God and not pablum or three points in a poem. Amen. And so also, if you want to come by, see us on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. We have service at 10 o'clock and Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock and you'll be blessed. And if you don't, you know, if you live far away, maybe you want to find a church where, where you're living. So give us a call at 724 752-9575 and we will plug you into a good church in your community wherever that is and so share this with your friends your relatives your co-workers tell them what's going on so they can watch on facebook live every time we have a service and remember this jesus loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life amen god bless you